Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very exponential equation with complex numbers. Notice that we kind of have like a tower and this tower is made up of three different things E, I and Z. Okay, not A, B, C, E, I, Z. So maybe it means easy. I don't know, we'll find out. But this is kind of like an exponential equation, and I have an i on the right-hand side. I'm supposed to find the z that satisfies this equation. We're also going to look at a result from Wolfram Alpha so that you can compare my solution to Wolfram Alpha's. Okay, so whenever you have an equation that is exponential, this is considered a complex exponential. But on the left-hand side, I have e to the power something. So why not turn the right-hand side to e to the power something? right? And that requires the polar form. So how do you write i in polar form? i is basically 0 plus 1i, in other words 0 comma 1 represents i in the argon plane, right? That's a, just a point, which is this one, so that's my i, and that's imaginary. And of course it doesn't have a real part, its real part is 0, which means that I can connect it to the origin, its distance from 0 is 1, which is its modulus, okay? I can call that r or absolute value of i. And then, of course, consider this as a kind of vector and look at the angle that it makes with the real axis on the positive side. That will be 180, no, 90 degrees, half of that, or pi over 2 radians. We prefer to express that in terms of radians. So theta is pi over 3 in other words and r is 1 which implies that z can be written as r e to the i theta so i can be written as 1 times e to the power i times pi over 2. You don't need to write this one but I just wanted to write it for emphasis and pi over 2 is not the only angle because you can add multiples of 2 pi like start here add 2 pi to it that's going to be pi over 2 plus 2 pi, which is going to be 5 pi over 2. Or you can just subtract pi over 2 minus 2 pi, and that's going to be negative 3 pi over 2, right? So that's just going to give you another value. And of course, if you're talking about the argument here, that is supposed to be usually between negative pi and pi. So you're probably not going to accept something like this, but instead you're going to use values that are between negative pi and pi. Anyways, that's for the principal argument, but... I don't know why I said that. Let's continue with this. So I can just write i as e to the power i times pi over 2, or I can include the multiples of 2 pi, which is 2 pi n, and then multiply the whole thing by i. Make sense? Now we're going to set this equal to the left-hand side, which is e to the i to the z equals this. All right? So far, so good? Awesome. Now, we have the e's on both sides, so we can go ahead and just ln or natural log, that's going to give us this equals this, right? So is it always true that e to the z equals e to the w implies z equals w, or is there something else that we can include? Obviously, we included the 2 pi and i, which represents 1 in the complex world, so we should be good to go. Now, we get the following, i to the z equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Now, I want you to pay attention to one thing here. Z is not an integer. It doesn't have to be. It's just a complex number. It could be, obviously, but in general, it's a complex number. And on the right-hand side, n is an integer. you got to be careful about that, okay? Only integer multiples of 2 pi. You, can, you can't even have a pi here because n can't be 1 half. Makes sense? Cool. Now, having said that, now we're going to look at possible values of z, right? But notice that the right-hand side is a multiple of i. So this is something times i. It could be positive or negative depending on the value of n. And just think about it. If it's like 5i or 7.3i or pi i, right? It's just going to be a positive multiple of i, which means its argument is going to be pi over 2 again. If it's negative, then its argument is going to be negative pi over 2. So I'm basically talking about two different numbers here like this number or this type of number. This is pi over 2, this is negative pi over 2. Make sense? So the value of n makes a huge difference. So for now, let's just assume that n is 
greater than or equal to zero because in that case this is going to be greater than zero doesn't have to be but I'm just saying for these values n is gonna be for these n values the expression inside the parentheses is gonna be positive make sense why is this important because we're going to use e again Euler's number right so first of all let's convert this to the exponential form i to the z can be written as e to the power z ln i hopefully you know that right in general w to the z can be written as e to the power z ln w in this case w happens to be i which is a complex number so it just works great now we got our i to the z let's go ahead and do the same thing on the right hand side which is a positive multiple of i make sense okay cool so here's what's going to happen uh, the argument is basically going to be for i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n because i is multiplied by a positive real number notice that this is real right then we can basically write this as pi over 2 plus 2 pi n which is the modulus of this number by the way times e to the power i times pi over 2 but instead of pi over 2 again i'm going to use pi over 2 plus 2 pi k so i can consider all solutions now a lot of times folks are asking like why do we consider sometimes the principal values sometimes we consider all the values i guess it depends on the mood right <laughs> doesn't matter you should always consider all solutions and then kind of specify maybe the uh, principal values so this is what i have so far let's go ahead and put these two uh, gigantic expressions together okay ready we're going to have this e to the power z ln i equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. By the way, this is just one case, and you can solve the second case. Similarly, it's just going to be more work along the same lines. Make sense? Okay. Now is a good point to take the natural log. And remember, the log of a complex number is going to give you the log of the modulus plus the argument, i times the argument. So it's going to look like this. Z ln i is going to be ln of the modulus, which is pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Remember, that's a positive value, so this is real, plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. That's quite complicated, right? but that's a complex number. You can think of it as a plus b i, and then ln i is also well known, by the way. How do you find ln i? Well, ln i is basically going to be ln 1, because its modulus is 1, it's, which is 0, that's real, by the way, plus i times the argument, which is i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. <laughs> okay, every time we got to use an integer, m and k are all integers here. They don't have to be the same. Make sense? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by ln i, like this here and here, and then replace ln i with, oops, I wrote lini, not ln i, ln i. I know some folks like, you have to put in parentheses. No, I mean, I, I think it's understood, hopefully. Now, Let's go ahead and isolate z from here and replace ln i with that. So z is going to be ln pi over 2 plus 2 pi n plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Some people said that my handwriting is not legible. I hope it is so I can make some corrections. All of that is divided by ln i, which is i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. All of these are integers again. Now we can get rid of this, of course, multiply the top and the bottom by negative i. When you do, you're going to get the negative i here and a negative i here. And when you distribute, when you distribute, you're going to get something interesting. This is going to give you a negative i here and it's going to give you a positive one. So it's going to look like this. Pi over 2 plus 2 pi k, because that's a positive one, minus i times ln pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. All of that is divided by, remember this is a positive 1, pi over 2 plus 2 pi m. Now if you kind of play around with the values of m and k, you're going to find some particular solutions, such as, for example, what if they are all equal to 0? We kind of get like, a, is that the principal solution? Pi over 2 minus i times ln pi over 2 divided by pi over 2. And that should be z equals from here 1 minus ln pi over 2 or I can write it as 2 ln pi over 2 over pi multiplied by i in the form 
A plus B, I. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.